Alright, in the previous video I revealed that I was working on a 3D modeler type software and in that video I showed progress where I had an orbital camera where you could do various orbital camera things they were all working pretty well and I had some meshes that you could look at and I also had a little window that you could drag around or I could drag around and resize and it would stay within the bounds of the screen and the next logical step for me was to make a docking system where I could dock that window the same way you would in really any program that has that type of UI, Unity included. I was actually specifically trying to replicate Blender's UI system, and I tried really hard to get the docking to work, but I ran into so many issues and I eventually hit a brick wall where I was not progressing, and I came to the conclusion that it's just one of those things that I can't do. I mean, I'd like to believe that I could do anything if I just sit down with it long enough and research about it enough and play with it enough, but I'm pretty certain, in fact, I know there are just certain things that I can't do, as hard as that is to admit. Not saying that I expect myself to be good at everything, but rather I get frustrated when I realize I'm not. Anyway... Um, so I resorted to using something that someone else has made. Um, and that particular thing is called Unity Dynamic Panels, made by somebody called Yasir Kula, I think. I, I'm probably not saying that correctly, sorry, but um, I will leave a link to the GitHub in the description and probably also the Asset Store link to the asset. It's free. It's awesome. It works exactly how I would like it to work and how I try to replicate myself. But, yeah, it works really well. It does what I want it to. The only exception is this 3D view, which does not work in floating windows. But that's really more my fault than um, the uh, developer of Dynamic Panels, because that's a problem on my end. Um... I won't go into too much detail about why that is, but long story short, it's just a hole in the canvas that's just, ah, that shows through to the camera behind it and just resizes the viewport of the camera to be within this rectangle. And of course, if there's a floating window, well, there's another window behind it. And in order to cut out the window behind it, I'd have to do a lot of um, UI and masking trickery that I can't be bothered to do. I mean, I couldn't even make docking UI. You expect me to be able to do that? Anyway, <clears throat> so, yeah, I've gotten to this point. And the thing after this point, which I would have shown this, but I would have effectively been showing, hey, I successfully downloaded and used someone's library. Cool, but, yeah, the next thing I did was work on context menus. At least these things. I don't know if they're actually called context menus, I know context menus as the things where you can right-click. Is there something I can right-click? Here we go. As something you can right-click, and it shows these little options. But the reason I'm calling these context menus as well is because when I do eventually implement the right-click thing, they will be using the exact same system anyway. So they'd be called context systems or context menus internally no matter what. Anyway, I have this Add button here in the 3D view. If I click it, I can click well, sphere, and I have a sphere. Now, this is something that I've actually had since the eh, since almost the beginning. Um, a little bit after the demo that I showed in the first video, I had it to this state, which is where it's basically, effectively, exactly, almost, <laughs> like Blender's mesh visualization thing, where um, currently it's in and analog to Blender's vertex selection mode where the vertices that are selected are shown in orange and it interpolates between the orange selection color and the black wireframe color um, at locations or at edges that are bordering those vertices and it fills in the faces that are actually completed. I also have an edge mode like Blender has so this is what it would look like in edge mode where it'll only show up if um, two vertices that form an edge are both selected. It doesn't do that interpolation thing like the other mode. And of course there's the faces mode 
which I believe this is how it looks in Blender. It's probably not quite right. It's probably closer to two, but I haven't checked in a while. But anyway, this is what I have working. I have someone else's UI package that I downloaded and managed to modify to fit the theme I had in mind. I have a Blender-like shader for showing the mesh of an object and showing your editing of the mesh. Um, I've got context menus that work really well. The only thing that I'm not sure about is multi-level context menus. Like, you know, the ones where, like, if I went to, I don't know. Sometimes, like in Blender, there are menus where you, there's a context menu, there's an option that brings us up another context menu, and sometimes there's another option in those that bring up yet another context menu, like a nested context menu thing. I don't know if my system can handle that quite right, but of course I have nothing to test that with. But when I do, I guess I'll find out. Anyway, that's all I have for this video. Um, sorry it was a little bit rambly, but I needed to make this progress update because it's been over a week since the last one and the most time has been spent failing to make a UI system and then realizing I need to download someone else's. But anyway, thanks to Yasir Kula for the amazing UI library. Thanks to you for watching. And that's all I have. Stay tuned for the next update. Bye.